Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. And on the bench today we have another radio from that famous container that was found, the CB Master 3600. And seeing you like my last episode on this, I thought I'd do another one on another one of these that is actually faulty this time. So, but before we start, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me a coffee, have a look on our website, microchips.net. And let's get started see whether we can bring this vintage radio back to life so i know i know people have um, said that these are new old stock well some of them may be but these were definitely faulty supposedly going to return back to back to cybernet but it never made it that far and the container got lost and then rediscovered many years later with all these wondrous wonderful radios inside so after looking inside the radio we can see that it's absolutely untouched as you would expect I don't know how these get faulty are they just faulty from manufacturer or who knows but you know they must have worked sometime maybe the customer returns but anyway having a look inside everything looks okay apart from this little scratched up area not sure what that's all about maybe that's a manufacturer problem who knows but if it causes a problem we'll um, address it but as you would expect everything looks just as normal no cut tracks or anything so let's have a look what is actually wrong so radio switches on it's low mid high on this notice that the 41 to 80 is in the wrong place i think that is actually a wiring issue with the switch but we're going to disable that anyway so we're just keying the microphone nothing happens no response from the needle apart from it going backwards And transmitting from a non good set we've got no receive so we've got no transmit or receive as you can hear absolutely nothing so looks like we've got a problem that's common to both of these circuits so let's just try a few basic things so first off our test meter on the 10240 and we have 10240 i'm not worried about accuracy at the moment i'm just worried about it actually working as intended so now we're on the 10695 test point this shouldn't stop it from working but we'll try it anyway and yep yeah, that's fine so some things are working so let's have a look at the um have a look at the vco so we'll connect to the vco test point he says as his leads fall off and let's have a look what the vco is doing so absolutely nothing on the vco test point completely no voltage now is this a VCO problem? Is it a PLL problem? Just checking my meter, making sure it's actually reading voltage, and it is. So yeah, I've got nothing on the VCO test point. So for me, it's either going to be the PLL or the VCO. But we're just going to check a couple of other things as well whilst we're in there so we're on channel one doesn't matter which channel one and we'll check the logic going into the pll chip and these should all be high which they are so we've got no miscodes or strange codes going into the pll so yeah that's absolutely fine there's our five volts that also powers the pll as well so we know we've got five volts supply to the circuit 
but absolutely nothing. So you can see the PLL codes are changing. Got five volts on pin one, as to be expected. But nothing on the test point. We've got five volts on the VCO. So for me, it's looking like we have a pillar fault. So I fired up the desolder gun. We've got the PLL out. First week of 81. PLL O to AG. Let's fit another one in there. So we'll get that soldered in. Just like so. There, nicely done. So we're on the PL, uh, VCL test point, and we switch it on, and now we have a voltage that looks kind of normal. So we'll plug a microphone in, and now we're keying up. We're producing our F power, so that was our problem. It was a PLL that was at fault. Okay, excellent. Nice easy fix. Shame these PLLs are getting a bit hard to come by, but we do have replacements. And if we don't have replacements, we can always use a 145, 158 anyway. This is still confusing me because all the bands are right, but the 41 to 8 is wrong, so looks like it's been wired up wrong. So we'll link it out anyway. So let's do some performance mods. So audio limiter to 5.6K and R44 needs to be a 15 and this one needs to be a 33. So we'll get rid of that one and we'll get rid of these two down here. When, when I can actually get hold of it. Just like so. So these are just standard modifications to improve the biasing. Now let's set the bias. 4.7 of a volt. So as you can see, just as we get close to 0.7 of a volt, it starts to go it starts to go mad so I think we've got a dirty pot so let's get that changed so just a standard 101 pot we'll put that in and hopefully that will stabilize our bias which it has done. So yeah, close enough, good enough. Now the next job, we're going to be replacing the VCO with a voltage feed to improve stability. We could have just fitted a regulator to this, but these VCOs have them built on. So we'll replace it and put one of these units in. Quickly just check the VCO voltage across the bands and everything's fine. We've added a capacitor there for improved audio and we've removed C99. And we're gonna re be replacing it with a 100 picofarad to improve SSB. Now for the alignment. So we're back on the 10240 test point and we'll get this as close to 10240 as we can. 
doesn't have to be absolutely bang on, but close enough, should be good enough. That will do just nicely. Now onto TP5 for the 10692 and 10695, which will be CT4 and CT5. Adjust those on USB and LSB. So 695 for USB, 692 for LSB. Then we're going to adjust the final and transmission frequency by using CT1, CT2 and CT3. These don't go in order sometimes. Sometimes the low band's in the middle and yeah. But we'll get them we'll get them good as. So high, low, and now for mid. Six nine five uh, six nine five, yeah. Very good. Everything's audio, looking good there. Audio, audio, one, now for two, the LSB offset. Three, two, one. Audio, one, two, three. Just one, do it two, by ear. Off a known good radio. And C160 and C162 to improve audio as well. I'm going to be fitting these capacitors in the place. And no video wouldn't be complete without some good old synad readings and actually this radio is actually very good on receive let's try and put it on the right frequency yep yeah. minus 120 db beautiful it's got good ears this radio Now for the SSB waveform, let's just check that for the on the two tone. So I've got my two tone generator transmitting. Everything's looking, everything's looking good there. Yep, not overly flat topping or clipping or anything. So that's good. Audio, 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 one, two, three, audio, audio. Everything audio. sounds good on a test radio. And to finish it off, we'll put some nice new screws in place. And there we have it. Quick service on this CB Master 3600. Quick repair. Gets this vintage radio back into a working state. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me a coffee. Have a look at my website, microchips.net. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.